Good morning, and welcome to online worship at Douglasville First United Methodist Church. Everyone is welcome here at Douglasville First. We're glad that you are joining us here this morning. If you're watching us on Facebook or YouTube, make sure you like, comment, share, and go ahead and drop a line and let us know that you joined us this morning. All right, let's get ready to worship. Turn your ear to heaven and hear the noise inside, the sound of angels are. to be with you as we continue to look at the power of the Holy Spirit. Today we will be focusing on scripture found in 1 Corinthians 2, 1 through 10 and 14 through 16. Hear the word of God. When I came to you, brothers and sisters, I did not come proclaiming the mystery of God to you in lofty words or wisdom. For I decided to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I came to you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. My speech and my proclamation were not with plausible words of wisdom, but with a demonstration of the spirit and of power so that your faith may rest not on human wisdom, but on the power of God. Yet among the mature, we do speak wisdom though it is not wisdom of this age or of the rulers of this age who are doomed to perish. But we speak wisdom, secret and hidden, which God decreed before the ages of our glory. None of the rulers of this age understand this, for if they had, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, what no eye has seen, no, no ear heard, nor the human heart conceived 
what God has prepared for those who love him. These things God has revealed to us through the Spirit. For the Spirit searches everyone, even the depths of God. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I was watching YouTube about a month ago, and I wasn't searching for her, but this woman just popped up on the screen and started preaching. She proclaimed that she had studied the Bible from beginning to end. And the only thing she could truly believe she had read was that all human beings are connected by human energy. And that if we could tap into this human energy and this power, then we could just change the world and fix everything. She called this energy creative energy. But to me, it reminded me of the story found in Genesis of Adam and Eve, when Adam and Eve thought if they could just get this fruit off this forbidden tree, they could eat it and they could be just like God. (laughs) All of these self-help books out there, they're saying that if we could just read the wisdom in their book, everything would be different. I saw a book recently that said, Adulting, How to Become a Grown-Up in 468 Easy-ish Steps. And there was another self-help book that said, You can be anyone you want to be. And it said, How to be a Pope, what to do and where to go once you get to the Vatican. (laughs) They're out there by the thousands. One of the most important lessons that comes through the Apostle Paul today is one that has stayed with us for thousands of years. The Apostle Paul is not relying on human knowledge or wisdom because human knowledge and wisdom are not the same as God's knowledge. And they are definitely not as powerful as God's spirit What I want to talk with you about today is to ask you this question. Can you tell the difference between the two kinds of wisdom? And are you willing to choose the wisdom of God over the wisdom of people? The truth is that God knew living the perfect life was not possible to do on our own. If we had the ability to fix ourselves, we would. If we could love those who hate us and who've been horrible to us without the help of God, we would. If we could be consistently kind and patient and good just because, (laughs) we would. If we could overcome every card dealt to us, like (laughs) sickness and addiction, wouldn't we? But the truth is, we need a Savior and we need him desperately. Jesus Christ is crucial to our lives. Many of us know this from personal experience, and we've seen (laughs) that Jesus works in our lives in wonderful ways. Paul here is writing about the ways that we can understand the work of God's Spirit and Jesus in our lives. When we receive Christ, we need to be open to what God's Spirit will do in our lives. It can fill us with peace and joy. And we also need to be open to the changes that the Spirit can bring. Changes that we honestly aren't able to make ourselves. When we're open, it becomes easier and easier to see what God is saying to us and we are more easily guided in our action by God's Spirit. Does this mean that we're supposed to just throw reason out the window? No way. Even John Wesley in his quadrilateral said, one of the ways to discern God is through wisdom. God gives us the ability to reason and can even enhance reason through the Spirit. Many of the churches that I've served during my lifetime (laughs) have really dumbed down talking about the Spirit. We're encouraged not to talk about the powerful ways the Spirit is working in our lives because people will kind of think we're weird, which means perhaps we are more concerned 
about our self-image than about the power of God. Or perhaps we're worried that people will be afraid and turned off by the power of God, which means perhaps we don't really trust the Holy Spirit to work in the lives of those who hear our testimonies. Let me continue reading in verses 14 through 16. Those who are unspiritual do not receive the gifts of God's spirit, for they have foolishness in them, and they are unable to understand these words and this spirit because they are given to us from God. Those who are spiritual discern all things, and they are themselves subject to no one else's scrutiny. For who has known the mind of God so as to instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. I love that. I so love the fact that we can have the mind of Christ. Today's scripture lets us know that people around us are not going to understand that we have God's spirit living in us. But at times, they will see our joy and our power. And they will want to know what that is. This is our opportunity to share Christ with them. But do we have the boldness to do this? As it says in verse 5, does our faith rest in the wisdom of man or in the power of God? Paul makes it clear that there is a difference between human wisdom and spiritual wisdom. After all, Paul says in 1 Corinthians 1.18, that even the message of the cross is folly to those who are perishing, but to us who are saved, it is the power of God. In our verses today, it says, the natural person does not accept the things of the Spirit of God, for they are folly to him. And he is not able to understand them because the things of God are spiritually discerned. One of the big questions we must ask ourselves today is, are we willing to say truths that may not be accepted by the general public? In verse 15, we read that those who are spiritual discern all things, and they themselves are subject to no one's scrutiny. I read this as, we are not enslaved to the views of those who are not spiritually mature. Spiritual maturity is a process. I hope that each one of us is undertaking this process. And in this church, we would love to come alongside you during this journey. You can connect with us through the website or just give the church a call and say you're interested in learning more. For today, let's think about the ways that we can embrace what Paul says in verse 5, so that our faith might not rest on the wisdom of people, but on the power of God. I will never forget going on a youth trip to Jamaica years back with another church. Our group, our team, was in charge of overseeing Vacation Bible School. Well, the trick was that the Vacation Bible School um, <laughs> was split into parts, and we had recreation as our responsibility. And the recreation was at the bottom of a very rocky slope on this big field and so every day the children would start jumping down the slope just going over the rocks like little goats and they would happily arrive at the bottom and I would slowly make my way over the rocks and finally arrive later one day I was making my way down the slope and I noticed at the bottom a horrible sight there was this young boy being held back by one of our youth, throwing punches with all of his might at this huge, huge, a young adult, I would say, with big muscles. And there was obviously some sort of problem between the two of them. Later on, I realized that the older adult had stolen the boy's soccer ball. And to them, it was like gold. Well, I didn't even have time to think when I saw this because the older boy was grabbing this in just enormous boulder and getting ready to crush the little boy with it. And I ran as fast as I could across the field and held out my hand. 
and said, in the name of Jesus, peace. Then we saw a miracle. The older boy's eyes glazed over and his arms went limply to his side, dropping the boulder to the ground. And he staggered off the field like he had been drinking. Well, the little child, he just went back to playing. <laughs> it was like nothing had even happened. But our youth stood there with his mouth hanging open as he witnessed what God had done. Well, the youth couldn't wait to tell his friends what had happened on the field. And he boldly said, God did a miracle for us. He saved this child. And he was just joyful as he was telling what God had done. Well, the youth pastor got word of it, and he said, don't tell anybody else this story. And the boy said, why? And he said, because the parents will get scared, and they won't want their youth to come on, on these trips anymore. Well, I have to say that young man did not stop telling the story. And he grew, and he grew, and he grew over the years in his faith. And he himself became a strong Christian leader, leading many others to know Christ. The Apostle Paul, by all accounts, was a very knowledgeable man with an extensive resume. He put aside his earthly wisdom and instead chose to be led by God's Spirit. He was intensely focused on Jesus so that other people might come to know about him and be saved. This focus allowed him to bring a message, a message of a living Christ to all who needed desperately to hear him. Now, God's power is also available to us through the Spirit. The Holy Spirit will fill whatever space we're willing to give. We just simply need to let Christ come into our lives and allow the Spirit to do its work on us. Very often, <laughs> we hold on to the wisdom of the world found in the latest video rather than depending on God for guidance. Sometimes, we're just afraid of uh, what others will think, especially our friends. What are they going to think if we give God total control of our lives and let the Spirit guide us. Today, I want to just encourage us to examine our thoughts and our actions and look at the areas that we can boldly depend on God and to, to just discern the times when we can boldly proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ as led by the Spirit and to look for times when we can even be a part of God's miracles that are happening right now in this world. Let's just take a quiet moment to ask the Holy Spirit where in our lives we need to see him, experience him, and open ourselves up to him. If you want to open your heart more to the area of faith and boldness that the Holy Spirit will open up to you, I want to encourage you now to repeat this prayer after me. Let us pray. Lord, I want to give myself totally to the guidance of your spirit. Let my faith rest in your power instead of in the wisdom of men. I ask you to fill me with your Holy Spirit and with your boldness that I may not surrender to the judgment of people, but instead joyfully seek and speak the truth. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.
Thank you so much for joining us today. To find out more about Douglasville First United Methodist Church, follow us on Facebook or at our website, douglasvillefumc.org. If you feel led to give to the church, there are several different options for you. And the easiest way to see all of those different options is to go online at douglasvillefumc.org. Have a great Sunday, everybody.